Welcome back everyone to theCUBE here at the NYSC studio. Day two of Media Week. The UN's in town for General Assembly. It's Climate Week, but of course, we're always here getting the data and sharing that with you here on the Stock Exchange. Our new studio, our, our East Coast Cube access point to the network and the data and the content. Our next guest is Cube alumni, Joseph Nelson, co-founder, CEO of RoboFlow. Featured twice, one on the Amazon Web Services Startup Showcase as an early rising star. And then I did a conversation uh, with him in a CUBE conversation, really kind of pioneering in cybersecurity area, cybersecurity, computer vision, I should say. We just had cybersecurity on. He's here with me. Joseph, thanks for coming back. Thanks for having me. So, um, since we last talked, a lot's changed. One, multimodal computer vision is a very key application uh, in Gen AI right now. and. And as more devices come on, you're seeing a lot more content uh, showing, hey, we can actually do more. So recognizing images, I love the car demo because a busy street shows a good demo. Um, but it's, it's almost like, looks like magic's happening. So, so give us a quick taste. I know you got some news too to share with us on the company uh, Milestone. Um, what do you want to go first? What the update is or the news? I'll give you a, maybe remind everybody what we're all about. Yes, do that. And then we can dive into some of the news we've got. Um, at RoboFlow, as you said, focused on computer vision, and the North Star of the company is really to make the world be, we say, programmable. So basically every scene and everything can and will be turned into software in our lifetime. So like you and I, we experience the world with our sense of sight, right? And actually sight predates language. So humans, we've long yeah. thought about hey, I need to experience the world with my eyes. The same is going to be true for software and computers in our lifetimes. But tooling's missing, infrastructure's missing, models are missing, community is missing. So RoboFlow exists to accelerate that inevitable transition. And so we build open source tools, a hosted platform, and the community required for companies and developers to train and deploy computer vision models and systems for visual understanding. Take us through the past uh, year and a half, of some of the traction and use cases, of how people are using you, what's been the innovation, as you guys start to knock down momentum taking and, and, and seeing success, take us through some of the examples where you guys have innovative and helped folks build and do cool things with computer vision. Well now, over half a million developers build with RoboFlow, and that includes over 50 of the Fortune 100. And so, all those use cases stem from someone that sees something, generally in the real world, mm -hmm. and they want to be able to take action on what's being seen. So for example, you have electric vehicle producing companies mm -hmm. who are trying to ramp their production very quickly, yeah. and to produce those vehicles and meet aggressive orders, they need to ensure that every vehicle they produce is done correctly. And to do that requires a lot of visual validation. So visual quality assurance to ensure the car was produced correctly, mm -hmm. the stamping happens correctly, we got the right number of screws and batteries, all these sorts of um, visually intensive processes. Or you have use cases in logistics and shipping. Yeah. Of you know, Right now, a lot of major shipping centers, ports, intermodal yeah. yards, are largely in the dark. Yeah. They don't know what's in their own inventory. When it arrived, if it's in the right spot, if it left, <laughs> and who it left with. Yeah. And a little bit of computer vision goes a really long yeah. way to giving you operational efficiency inside your business. You, you know, it's really interesting is, is that, you know, um, gen one of the web was, search was the killer app. I think vision is the killer app of gen AI because you can do so much with images, like whether you're flying a drone over a site or you're using things for operational efficiency if you want to repair windmills or any kind of, anything that's involving a image. That's right. Which is our world, right? That's and right. And there's a lot more images in, from a data perspective, petabytes and zettabytes of images. So I think, I think developers are going to do some creative things. I was talking to a, uh, a person yesterday saying, hey, they're using drones to fly over, you know, when waste disposal goes out to see who's putting what's out on, on the curb. Yep. To get like kind of an estimated payload. Yep. Like to meter how well they're doing their recycling. We have customers that'll take drones and they'll fly them over top of fields to identify where there's weeds and where there's meant to be their crop of interest. And then instead of spraying pesticides or herbicides yeah. for the weeds, they can send out targeted crews to go remove those weeds at that point in time. Or folks that are doing bridge yeah. repairs or analyzing transformers and power lines, knowing what stuff is presently in use. I mean, to your point, what's changed in the last 18 months, it's gotten easier, models have gotten faster, they've gotten smaller, there's a greater proliferation of cameras, and compute's been getting cheaper. All of those same trends that have been true for the last decade yeah. have only accelerated, and it's given rise to an entire new explosion 
a possibility. You know, it's interesting. I was on the Cube Pod with Dave last Friday. Every Friday we go. I was riffing on this concept because someone's asked me, "What's different about this next wave?" And I'm like, "Well, it's an interesting point because the last wave was cloud. Okay, you said SaaS apps were developing on top of cloud. I go, but it's interesting. And what's after SaaS? So we were kind of riffing on that, and we came up with two main theses. SaaS changes because SaaS apps are going to have generative AI enablement, so that's agentic systems, intelligence, end-to-end -end workflow. Okay, yeah, good job. Yeah, that's going to definitely be true. Yeah. And then a new category of apps are developing. I don't have a word for it yet. Our research team will work on that, but I call it scalable apps. And it's a new category because it's um, entrepreneurs and engineers are solving hard problems that couldn't get be done before. Because we have the democratization of supercomputing with NVIDIA clustered systems and custom silicon, so the infrastructure is getting more powerful, cloud. Yep. So that's next gen cloud, that's next gen on premise. So you have your example of that, you're an example of a new category. I mean, who would have thought to fly a drone over a field? Who would have thought about doing all this kind of stuff? They thought about it, but it was too hard to That's get. Right. You had to run HPC computers, figure out how to get the cash, expensive as hell to run. So I think we're going to see a, a, a wave of new categorical companies and, and value from hard problems. We're seeing a Cambrian explosion of visual applications and visual understanding. Because as you said, when it becomes really a couple of hours, couple of minutes endeavor to give your application the sense of sight, then of course, there's a whole new set of features that you can enable for your end customer. Whereas before, you know, it maybe took a team of PhDs and a research breakthrough to identify what the thing is, how many there are, if it's in the right place, can we read these given letters, is now already either enabled by an existing multimodal VLM or an existing model that can basically be plugged right into those systems. But what's missing is a lot of the infrastructure to be able to say, well, how is that going to do yeah. on my data? And can I build and create systems that integrate with my, how do I take action? Yeah. So I run my model, yeah. that's requisite, necessary, but not sufficient yeah. for value. Yeah. I need to incorporate that with yeah. my systems of where the images and videos are going to come from, run it on the edge, validate that it's doing the right thing, and connect that output to some downstream validation. You guys are awesome. I'm a big fan of what you guys are doing. I think you're on the next generation. I'm kind of jealous. I wish I was uh, uh, in your shoes, younger. I'd be crushing it right now. I'd love the, love the environment. It's just so much fun to just sink your teeth in. So I have to ask you, as an entrepreneur and CEO, co-founder and CEO, um, you're building this out. You're on this wave. It's going to be a generational shift. What's your mindset like? And I'm sure you run into the older guys like me. Ah, you can't do that. You're younger. You're the younger generation coming up, and you're going to knock down these opportunities. You're already doing it. I mean, huge success. What's it like? And, and what's the journey been like? I mean, I'm saying people like me, but like you know, I mean, old school, old guard. They might not see it. Okay, there's like a whole another mindset to hit these scalable apps. The thing that's most exciting is. We're living in a time where the most transformative technology of our lifetimes is, is right in front of us. I mean, RoboFlow started you know, in 2020, we made our tools broadly available, pre-chat GBT, pre-before it was the obvious thing to do, but we knew that it was going to be the most impactful technology of our lifetimes. And when we set out to make the world programmable, we said, this is at least one lifetime's worth of work. And so what it's felt yeah. like is honestly an honor and a privilege, but also responsibility to ensure that this technology, which we know has so much promise, so much potential, and is making an impact, is commercialized, adopted, open source, yeah. and put into the hands of builders and of enterprises to accelerate a transition that we know is going to unlock so much value. And at each stage of the GUA, we're you know, fortunate to be able to be continuing to stack up wins, but we have to remember it is so early <laughs> in the life cycle. You're pioneering. In the, in the company that truly makes the world programmable, it's going to make this New yeah. York Stock Exchange look like a dwarf. Yeah. The company that yeah. understands... There'll be a digital twin of this. Oh, <laughs> exactly. I mean, digital twins of this. I mean, I, I'm saying the companies that are listed yeah. here were yeah. just behind you and me. And you think about the trillion dollar businesses that exist. The opportunity to have truly systems of visual understanding is at least, at least yeah. as valuable as that. Yeah. I mean, and so I think about it like, man, I'm super excited that we maintain some of the most popular open source libraries for developers, a top 10 computer vision yeah. repository, the ability for people to create and deploy. But I remember that it's yeah. still so early. This game's just beginning. And again, that's why I brought that up because you have to now look at everything's being thrown at you because you're pioneering. So you, you're seeing things. What are you seeing that's in your way you're going to take down next? Because as you look at new territory, 
it's new. Yep. What are you seeing now that you're going to move next on? Like you obviously get the libraries out there, you got the developer army, yep. people are engaging, building valuable applications, experimenting, learning, get high scale computing. What's in front of you that you got to, that's a blocker or maybe an, a decelerant, or how do you get to that straight and narrow? What is, what's on your mind? What do you see in front of you? So some of the things that RoboFlow has done extremely well to date for developers and enterprises is create tooling for them to curate high quality data sets and the right images from their video and be able to synthesize how is this image impacting model performance, preparing it with their teams, and training a model. However, once you have a model, you're at the beginning, you're at the starting line, yeah. not the finish line of getting to value, right? If I have a model that can tell me how many screws there are on a battery, that's interesting, but what I need to know is, was that the number I expected? Yeah. And when it's not the number I expected, what do I do? And how do yeah. I take action? And how do I connect that to my systems? And so we've been investing yeah. heavily in creating workflows yeah that enable folks to chain together multiple model types, build visual agents that can say, hey, here's a video feed. If some given event happens, I'm going to trigger some other results and then pass that to a downstream system. So, you know, in a pedestrian example, I, uh, in San Francisco, every once in a while, I have a package that I expect to be there and sometimes it's not there on the doorstep, right? <laughs> and I can build with RoboFlow the ability to have a object detection model that's running in real time at the edge 30 frames per second, looking for a package. Then when it sees the package, crops to the view of that package, sends it to Quad or GBTV or yeah. maybe a local VLN like Florence or Florence2, and says, hey, tell me what that package was, tell me who it's from, do OCR on the label, and then connect that to Twilio and send me a text. And that visual workflow, that agent, is something that I can now build in yeah. RoboFlow and deploy immediately. Yeah. So that's one huge next yeah opportunity slash challenge to take down is all the integrations, all the things that people want to stitch yeah. and tools to take together. One other one that I'll tell you about, multimodality. So increasingly, it's not just about having a single sense of visual understanding with images. It's combining image and text, or combining image and soon audio. And that just gives your system a much richer semantic understanding of what you're looking at. So what does that mean for our customers? What that means for our customers is, on day one, your time to value is instantaneous. Okay. You can take a model that understands your product inventory, what's that uh, designer brand, what it should have looked like, automatically categorize, make sure inventory is maintained correctly, sort through whose image yeah. is in the right place yeah. on your given website, and deploy those systems to production uh, extremely quickly. And multimodality is early, but very promising. And we're super yeah. fortunate at RoboFlow to be in the position yeah. and, to and usher yeah, it and, and this is definitely going to happen too. It's not like it's a hypothetical. I mean, it's just progression. That's right. I mean, it's evolution. It's interesting as we move from probability to you know reasoning and then now causality. They're starting to get into the flywheel of the next gen yep. view, which is okay. Baseline, basic infrastructure, app development's done. Then you just keep progressing. This is a again multi generational, at least a decade ramp up for sure. Yep. Yep. And that's why, I mean, you alluded to news earlier. Um, yeah, let's get into the news. So you got some big news to announce here on theCUBE and no other place than the New York Stock Exchange. No, they're not going public yet. Not but yet. Go ahead. Uh, so we uh, recently shared that we raised $40 million in additional funding, raising our total raise to just over 62 million. Uh, GV, formerly Google Ventures, is leading the round with participation from folks like Guillermo Rausch, the CEO of Vercel, Amjad Massad, the CEO of Replit, Jeff Dean, who's the Google senior fellow who also created TensorFlow, and our existing investors, Y Combinator and Kraft, continuing to participate and double down on the company. And the reason that we're in a position to capitalize on having additional resources and the wind at our backs is because the strong traction that we've seen crossing the half a million developers of the 70 million that are out there, let alone the millions that will use and build computer vision systems, and the billions that will experience their impact as an end user, and we're just at the beginning of the precipice of that. But RoboFlow is the closest to the default set of tools that someone's going to use to build systems for visual understanding. And so we're elated to be able to be in a position to continue to accelerate. And by the way, we still have the majority of our prior financing in the bank when we did this. We're just in a position where the commercial traction and the opportunity in front of us is so large. Are you guys making money now? We have the opportunity to, to accelerate. Are you guys making money now or is there revenue? Rev oh yeah. So yeah, you got good rev. So you're not drawing down heavily on your Series A. So you got a lot of dry powder. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Always a good thing. So on the B round, who led the A round? Was it Kraft? Kraft Ventures. And yep. GV, Google Ventures. Yep. Is raising, is leading the B. Yep. Great. And you got some great pedigree in there. So you got a lot of people around the table that get tech. 
That's right. That's key. Yep. I mean, to have a firm like GV who, you know, they just celebrated their 15th year. And something that I'm excited about in partnership with them is they're financially independent from Google. Yeah. So they have their own their own operating model where they need to return to their single LP, but their LPs. Yet, because they're single LP, they're able to have long-term return yeah. targets. Yeah. That's why at a business like Vercel, Guillermo has been building Next as a project. And when I was speaking with folks that have the pleasure of working with GV, Guillermo had partnered with GV for a Series B, and he found that GV was a great partner to continue on additional yeah. rounds. Google's a great partner. They understood the developer community, they understood yeah. the power of enterprise, and who understands AI better than a company well, like Well, David Google? Crane, who was just featured in the Fortune, I've known him since he was in the comms team, when, I mean, over a decade and a half ago. He knows tech, he's a Valley uh, veteran. Um, they have a team of um, really strong direct managing directors that get the tech equation. That's right. And they're in the long game, but they're still, they're still incented as VCs, but they're not hardcore on the sense of, I mean, they're hardcore to make money. No one's not, all VCs are, are going to make money, but they get, the game. They take long-term bets, they and they're able to. And they're able to, and they understand, because they have so much DNA of what success looks like. That's right. And I like that approach. I think that's the way it, it's going for the VCs. You're seeing, you know, all the VCs, they stay, they're clustering around where there's a nice lineage of entrepreneurial track record. Berkeley's a big example, up in the Bay Area, where we, where we are, um, down in Palo Alto, you're starting to see the networks. and you know, and. People have seen the success one, and more founders are involved. Yep. Right, Kraft with David Sachs yep. and that team, so he knows what success looks like. That's right. He's been successful, plus he's got a great podcast. Yep. So always good to have visibility on the all-in pod. Yeah, I mean, Sachs has been <laughs> on our board for, for three years. He's been yeah. a tremendous supporter of the business and helped us yeah. make the right decisions for scaling and growing. Yeah. And he's pragmatic and he gets, he's very how, pragmatic. He gets how the world works. Um, well, that's great news. Congratulations. Well, we, when you're uh, when we're going to be out seeing each other with your AI, maybe you can help the cube get some eyes. Right now, we've got video only and audio. So as we get our app out there, we're going to get some of those glasses from from Meta. It's uh, so those new glasses that came out. So we'll see how we can bring cube community uh, visual. 100%. You got to be indexing your video. Congratulations. You got to be making this stuff possible. All right, Joseph's in here. Big news, Series B, 40 million. They had a lot of left, they're A left, they're growing. If you're interested in solving hard problems, there's a really batch of startups like these guys at RoboFlow and others. They're building and solving hard problems that are categorically new unicorn and decacorn opportunities because the world is changing. These scalable apps have never been solved before because they couldn't until now. Great time to be in here. And again, featuring all the data here inside theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.